Hi, I'm John Mandeville. I'm one of the coaches at the Collab 365 Academy, and you're here today to go and look at Power Automate Desktop. And I'm going to show you three great tips that might get you interested in using it, and also finding out how easy it is to automate your workflows and save loads of time. So let's go take a look at Power Automate Desktop. First up, if you haven't used it before, pop on over to make.powerautomate.com when you're signed into your tenant and have a look at the create screen on the left hand side here. I'll just zoom this up for you. You'll notice at the top of that create screen there's this little install icon. Click on that, get Power Automate for desktop. That's called PAD, P-A-D, Power Automate for Desktop. Go grab yourself a copy. I strongly recommend it. It's always being updated, and every time I open it, there's something new to go and explore. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to explore three things that you can do in Power Automate Desktop that may get you intrigued in using this fantastic automation tool. When you load it up, this is the interface you'll get. You can sign in using your Microsoft 365 account. You can select the Power Platform environment you want these desktop flows to exist in. They can be accessed from cloud flows, i.e. you can trigger them from a cloud flow. So all of this process is automated. But what you can also do is you can trigger these things manually. You can do some clever things if you upgrade and get premium connector licenses, but we don't need to do that to show you how valuable this tool might be for you. Everything I'm going to show you now is completely free as part of your Microsoft 365 license. You download this app, you follow along, have a go. So here's a flow I've built, giving you three great examples. Let me just show you what the interface looks like when you create or open an existing flow. There's a bunch of actions on the left hand side. I mentioned this earlier, these are always growing. You can see which actions here require a premium connector or a premium license and there's a load of different ways to get that, I won't cover in this video. But you can also see which actions you can perform that don't cost you anything. The ones I would recommend you look out for at a high level, if you type the words in here, you can start to search for different actions. We've got a whole bunch of actions where we can interact with Excel documents. Maybe you've got a folder full of Excel documents and you have to do certain data entry across a range and you do not want to go in and type all of those things. Maybe you've got the same for Word documents. So again, Word is another package of great activities that you can perform out of the box with a whole bunch of documents. You've then got things you can do with files. So when you're clicking on files, you can get loads of files in a folder, you can open files, you can interact with them, you can merge them, all sorts of different activities. Take a few minutes, I would recommend right now to download this app and go and explore. The other thing you can do is you can set up bulk actions. This action group here will be particularly useful to you. This is where you can navigate to a set of folders, for example, and for every item in that folder, you can cycle through and do things. The last group I want to show you is some things called key actions. This is where you interact with a mouse and keyboard in a human-like manner, but you can automate all of that process. If you want, you can record yourself doing all sorts of different interactions on your desktop with any application and get the relevant actions that Power Automate Desktop is going to take for you already taken so you don't have to select them from this list. But I'm going to show you how to build it from the ground up. So let me give you three examples to whet your appetite for Power Automate Desktop. The first of these, I'm going to combine the files idea, interacting with folders, files. In my case, these are synchronized with OneDrive and document libraries, so that's all good. I'm also going to use loops, so that's another technique to get used to, and I'm going to use key interactions. What I'm also going to do here, so in fact four things, I'm going to launch Word. So this is application interactions that I'm going to do. So you've already seen there, really, really simply, in three or four steps, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of things which you can repeat, reuse, configure to your heart's delight. So the first thing to note is that on the left-hand side, I've shown you all the actions you can take, and you can expand and collapse all of those good things. In the middle is your canvas. I've already built some stuff for you. On the right hand side is the interactions, the variables, the collections, the things that you're storing and using will get updated in real time and you can see it happening on the right hand side. So that's kind of your control screen if you like, your monitoring screen as these run. Now how do I get things over into this canvas? Well it's dead easy. So first of all we'll just type comment. Great example, get used to commenting your flows so it's easy to understand when you come back to it. All you do, click on an action, drag it across. Drop it in there. For every action, you'll get a different screen like this, so it'll ask you to put some things in. 
I've already got some comments, so let's cancel out of there. Let's kill that one. Here, I've dragged the get files in folder into my canvas. Let me double click on it. That's a way to interact with each action. And you'll see here, I can choose a folder. I can choose a variable if I wish to. We'll talk about that in another video. Or I can put some um, PowerFX, some functions into this. Don't need to do that. All this is going to do is go and look in a folder, get every document, and it's going to filter them for me for docx's. So it'll ignore any Excel files because in this case, I'm going to show you Word. There's a load of advanced triggers, switches, all sorts of good things you can do. You can also catch errors. I'm going to keep it dead simple. Let's click uh, cancel out or save in your case. What that does is it will go and get a bunch of files in that folder and it will store them in this thing called Col Word Docs. I've named it Col Word Docs. It's just a collection of items stored in Power Automate desktop memory. A great tip to get used to is if you hover your mouse over this blank area left hand side before you run a flow, you can click on it and put in what's called a breakpoint. That will mean this flow, when I click run, will run to this point. You can have multiple breakpoints. You can get rid of them. Get used to using that as part of your debugging process when you're building these flows. Let me just show you what actually happens if I put that debug point. Uh, let's just put it down here so you can see the whole thing taking place in real time. Just a quick note, you cannot put a debug point on a comment. It has to be an action that's going to take place. So. I mentioned before, you can run these things from Cloudflows. That costs, that's called Robotic Process Automation. That is a premium license. You don't need it, you can run them manually. So I'm gonna run this flow now. But first of all, remember, when you're testing, you can use these things called breakpoints. Let me just pop one into there and click Run. Flows run from top to bottom. You can call flows from other flows. They're called child flows. You'll see there the step that's currently running in the light blue. You'll see my Word instance pop onto screen. The first document in the folder, there's three of them for information, and it's going to wait. Then it's going to send some keystrokes, the Alt, N, and H. Really handy. Tab is another brilliant one to send because that can get you around lots of screens. You saw there, it popped down three rows and it pressed Enter, and it's just put the third header into this document. I can do all sorts of things like that. It's super easy. Now, let me just stop this and show you a couple of things. You'll notice these greyed out actions over here. All that's happened there is I've clicked the ellipse on the right hand side and used enable or disable action. And that's a way you can keep your actions in the flow if you're experimenting and still build on that flow and reinstate them without deleting and re-adding them. Especially good for complex actions that you put into your flow. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Word document. I'm going to find the first instance of John at because what I've done, I've introduced an error across all of my documents where my emails changed. Really quite common, you might want to change pieces of text across lots and lots of documents. So let's just give this a run and see how it works. So again, it's going to initialize the flow, it's going to go to the top and it's going to open the Word document and we'll see it running as you can there. It's going to launch Word, it's going to wait and then it's going to quickly, you can see on screen there, John at, let's see what it does. Does it find that John at? It does and it's changed it down here just in case you missed it to john.mandeville at collab365.com. Now clearly uh, what it's actually done is it's taken the John at, the first portion, and it's put the whole email address in so it's kept the other bit. But you know, you can do other things there. You could improve that whole piece. I should probably put the whole email address in. But you get the idea. That's the kind of thing that you're gonna face with in Power Automate Desktop where you do something, you think it'll work, but you just have to use those debugs. You have to restart it. You have to keep getting used to changing things and rerunning it. Just good practice to get into, so I don't mind showing you that. Before I get to my last showcase, there is one other one I want to show you around text, around documents. It can be text anywhere. It's just a really fantastic shortcut. And you kind of get the theme. I use Power Automate Desktop a lot for text actions, whether it's in Word documents, Excel, somewhere else, or document manipulation. For me, that's like its core value. I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds of other values. And if you've got one that you're thinking about or you've used it for, pop it in comments, share that with people watching this video because it's one of those tools that, yeah, it's damn painful at times, but it's super, super helpful. And I quite like to get the word out there that it is really super helpful. But do you know what? You've got to experiment. You've got to stick with it and be a little open to some painful, frustrating times with it. But it's great. Anyway. 
couple more ideas for text-based fun you can have on screen. Um, let me just zoom these up. So you can read from documents, you can write from documents, you can pass text if you grab text to find the positions of things. We've already done find and replace. We've also got two of these here. Let's just delete one of them. This is really useful. Recognize entities in text. You can look for different kinds of things in text. Let's just open this up for you so you can have a look. These are pre-baked searches. So I can find um, quoted text, URLs, IP addresses, percentages, phone numbers. Really handy for scanning bulk documents. Have a go with that. The other one to have a go with if you're debugging is use a display message. It's a great way to intercept information in your flow as it's running. Pop up a message, pop the information into your dialog box. So you can just click it to close it. You've got all sorts of different things you can configure there. I click that too quick, but you've got different buttons you can set up. Now, the last one, this is so cool. I have to be really careful how I run this for you, but I discovered this today. Wait for text on screen using OCR, uh, character recognition. So it's gonna scan my screen in real time. And if something pops onto my screen, it'll do a thing. In this case, all it's gonna do is it's gonna store the location where it finds it into some variables up here. So. The funny thing is, if you run this flow and you've got wait for text, bazinga, yeah, I'm a bit of a um, Big Bang Theory fan, if it spots it, it'll store the space. If I play this, that word bazinga's on screen, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to move this off screen, it's going to look a bit weird, I'm going to press play, and then I've got a Word document over here that I'm going to pop up and see if it works. So imagine this is like a monitoring dashboard and you're looking for a high alert or something to set off an alarm or to do something. I'm sure alarm systems will work with those monitoring. But anyway, you get the idea. So this one, I've got to be super careful how I record this because if I play it and it sits and waits for the word Bazinga, you know what? It will see the word Bazinga on screen here. So let me just minimize this. I'm going to bring it. It's going to look a bit odd, but I'm going to bring it down below the bottom of the screen and I'm going to press play and it's going to sit and it's going to wait for the word Bazinga to be on my screen. This could be a monitoring dashboard on your wall, like I say. So you see it's playing there. It's got the stop and the pause. So I'm going to pop up a Word document here. So I'm just typing away. Uh, so here we go. You can see it's still paused. It's, oh, sorry, see it's still playing. It's still monitoring. And I'm going to put Bazinga. And let's see what happens, how quickly it will spot that. There you go. Took a little while this time. Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's slower. But what it's done there is it's lodged the location of that word in terms of X and Y coordinates. So I could then use something like a mouse action. So move the mouse to those coordinates, pop those coordinates in and the mouse would go. And then I could do a thing. So maybe you're waiting for a particular button to appear on a screen. And when it appears, you want to take an action. You can do all of that with Power Automate Desktop. So... If you've enjoyed that, let us know. Drop us a comment in the comments. Or if you found that that's like totally crazy, why would I ever use that? Again, drop us a comment in the comments. If you've got a better use case for Power Automate Desktop or one that you use all the time, please do drop a comment in the comments or come and see me at the Academy. I'd love to chat to you. For now, I'm going to say goodbye. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Whenever you're watching this video, it's been lovely spending time with Power Automate Desktop and with you. And come and see me in the next one. Take care.